so let's look at the digital transformation first. <clears throat> so this is kind of like a big trend, mega trend that is happening. And you, this has a long history from uh, agriculture to, to industry to services. So this test, it's not saying that, that uh, agriculture is going away. It's not saying the industry is going away. It's not saying that services are going away. What it's saying is that uh, the, where the majority of business, where the majority of money and specifically new money is generated is either moving or transferring under this label. So uh, 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 an industry, if, if for example, music industry, uh, if you are selling individual songs or CDs, you could consider that as a music industry. But when you are talking about streaming services in music, now it's kind of same industry, but it's now labeled as a service. So it just changes how it has transferred the, the where the revenue is coming or how the revenue is captured, how the business model is labeled. Uh, and this transition continues with a digital transformation that the majority of all of these are going to be converted into labels of capturing data, make monetizing data, doing business with data, and the services are a side product to get to the data. And AI is behind the data, so when, when that comes, perhaps you just buy uh, AI experiences, you buy AI as a service, and data is the tool that enables AI to work better and improve itself, and, and the data comes from the services, but now you are buying AI services instead of, uh, or using AI instead of thinking of buying individual services. Maybe you just have AI as a service, and then AI buys the services for you based on your behavior or, uh, or based on um, the, the, the settings you give it uh, in verbally or with your behavior or combination of that or giving it limitations, what it should do, what it shouldn't do, and so forth. So this is important to understand uh, this trend uh, in the digital transformation. And all of the companies in the world are struggling and all the businesses struggling. How do they make their own change in their own dis industry in context of this mega, mega trend uh, that is feeding the new innovations, that are feeding the new actors, that are feeding the new investments, the new, new companies to enter to change the status quo. So in context of data, so uh, there's a, a significant development. More data is being generated all the time. More data is captured all the time. Uh, better quality data, better labeled data, more real-time data from more offline, uh, capturing offline activities data uh, is, is being captured. And in business, this anything uh, of how that uh, data economy will develop in Europe alone uh, already by 2020, it's estimated on the personal data alone, and this is what GDPR regulation applies to, and I'll cover that a little bit more, uh, is, is 1 trillion euros, almost 8% of the EU's GDP is going to be on the personalized data alone. In a global data economy, uh, it's predicted to be at 3 trillion, and these are just huge uh, amounts and it will de be divided in multiple sectors and it will go through different geographical spreads and different industry spreads and so forth. But the mega trend is that this um, transformation from services to the data labeled as uh, where the revenue comes from is, is, is uh, impacting all the industries and creating new opportunities. In, and the, uh, the regulation is even supporting more of these developments uh, because currently we all know that the data business is controlled uh, in, in very limited hands um, in global scale. In one hand, it's very invisible how that business happens and, and it's in too few of the hands and that's not healthy for the global development and uh, economic development within individual regions and countries and so forth. 
and that's why the regulator wants to even up the, the field for new innovators, for better user experiences, uh, more, less centralized data uh, to be vulnerable and so forth. <clears throat> so the growing portion of any national economy is coming from value creation based on data. Uh, so basically portion of services from relative volume of overall value produced will continue to grow. Uh, data business will also take growing portion of the services market, either that the services become free, but the data monetization is happening on the background. Uh, similarly, like, uh, like now, we are used to using Google search for free, but we are in posted uh, ads. So data is the similar tool behind that services can be free because data itself, if there's a model, where data can be monetized, then you don't have to be uh, to actually take a fee from the service itself. Of course, you have to do this with new regulation in mind and user's consent, uh, user's approval, but this is what it basically means. So in the next three to five years, AI solutions will change the productivity of labor and base logic of business in with unforeseen ways. And data is uh, AI business is dependent on data. So that's the kind of why they are coming uh, one after another. The better data there is, the better AI there can be. AI needs to be trained with labeled quality data. Uh, and, and that's just how they are dependent on each other. And that's why also if, you, if someone is trying to win and come up with a winner in the AI business, that's why they are very heavily investing in harvesting and collecting data today. And those who are not are going to be the, 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 the ones uh, that are facing the disruption. So this is just the mega trends perspective, how this will play out in individual services, individual organizations, individual startups, individual uh, markets, individual customers experience, individual countries is yet to be seen. But that's why they're called megatrends, that it it's gives signals, it gives weather forecasts, but it doesn't tell you exact things. So digital balance of trade and balance of current accounts works as measure for platform economy. But it's some, somewhat unclear, for example, how digital economy and digital business and platform economy should be in, uh, uh, calculated or measured, for example, in, in GDP today. And this is even a problem for countries to calculate how they are performing with the regulatory changes. Because if they are count, not counting uh, the digital uh, balance and trade, uh, it's, it's, it's very hard to, to see how the economy is actually doing. So platform economy is, is basically the, the, the dominant uh, business model in the digital world today, where basically you have on one hand, you have the platforms like Facebook or iTunes Store or Gmail or, or uh, any of or Airbnb, uh, Uber, uh, Supercell or their individual games uh, and so forth. And then you have the ecosystems that are mostly seen today as the extended ecosystems of individual platforms. So you have Facebook and then you have Facebook ecosystem. Then you have, um, uh, then you have Apple or Google and their ecosystem. You have Amazon and you have their Amazon services and Amazon ecosystems. And these ecosystems, the same in the, the mobile uh, operating systems. You have the, the iOS and you have the Android. In the desktop, you have the, the Mac OS, you have the Linux, you have the, the Windows. But even more so, the digital ecosystems also are starting to live a life without the platform as a, as, as a visible part of that. And for example, in China, uh, Alibaba, and uh, for example, is, is very big in, in that context. And Amazon also falls partly with their AWS concept into that world where it's less visible, it's more B2B, 
but even more so, there are also types of ecosystems that don't have any individual uh, strong actor uh, controlling the ecosystem. So more of an industry collaboration type of ecosystem where then there can be even more neutral orchestrators uh, making that, uh, that uh, ecosystem function. But there's opportunities in, in serving this platform business models and utilizing these platform business models and these ecosystem concepts uh, in the digital economy. So the, the main difference between this platform approach and the traditional value chain business model is that it's, it's the whole value chain is kind of open to, to cross-functional, non-linear interactions between different in, uh, actors of the value chain or previous value chain acting more as an ecosystem um, of, of, of generating value. So in a, in a value chain business model, basically if you think like a, a phone business or a PC business, there's the production, there's the delivery, there's the design, there's all of these things. And then the value is finally captured from the end customer. And the value is kind of distributed in the value chain to those parties that are part of the, the, the delivery process. Where in the platform economy, uh, it's more of interaction directly between these different parties, creating more uh, organically uh, these different types of opportunities. And when it happens in digital space, now you have the Airbnb, now you have the, um, or enabled by a digital space, the Airbnbs and Ubers where the, the driver on the one hand and the, the, the one being uh, uh, using, using the delivery service on the other hand and you just uh, approach this with this uh, platform approach. And the platform economy also challenges all the business logic in all industries. So this concept is already challenging and people are coming up with many different approaches to change the, the linear concepts to more platform economy models. So there's a, a, a big, big, big uh, we were part of one of the research that created um, uh, a big study for this to one country uh, to create a, um, a roadmap for a digital economy. And we seek a lot of data and research behind these topics. And, and it's really the dominant driving business model uh, for in many industries already today and have been for a long time. So in future, all of the manufacturing machines, equipments must, must enhance their products. They, they need to start thinking of the service layer that is already a, a dominant uh, model in, in high level. They need to start thinking what the data means for them and then this uh, systemic layer, which is more this ecosystemic thinking and positioning. So there are a lot of opportunities how these big actors will need to go through this change and a lot of services and products that can be created in context of this when it's uh, industry play or when it's the consumer facing level like in fintech, how a new customer experience level will live on top of the existing banking services for example. So going from uh, from just digital, so how how for example many products currently have this some kind of service extension uh, attached to it. It means that there needs to be more of these layers, and more of these layers will create more opportunities and change the user experience. Like how can you have you know a, a, a first you know a, a, a tractor as a service. And then actually you just want to have uh, you know, a certain amount of crop or, or, or products uh, delivered and, and predicted what you will need by AI in a, in a certain phase. And in between there are many of these enabling uh, factors. But these are important things when really thinking of some, some bigger business or whatever you're thinking of starting small or small problem and pushing those ideas through these kind of megatrends thinking and logic and seeing 
how would that actually could potentially look like. And doesn't mean you try to need to go there. That can be a vision. You can think what would be our milestone. And if this, you know, if we achieve this validation, maybe we can then go to this, and then we can go to that, and so forth. So changing from product or service experience to platform experience. So not only to produce and this value chain model where then it's captured in a form of product, but where there's a platform where on top of their products and services, there's experiences and you have actors, consumers, uh, creators and, and uh, resellers. And all of this platform, of course, create a lot of data and the data is, is one of the big trends and on top of that comes the AI. So this is how they are dependent and you can see when you look at through this lens, you look at any of the actors, you know exactly why they are, are growing so fast and you can predict their next moves pretty easily. Uh, but at the same time, you can see a lot of the areas and industries and segments that are not covered where the same strategies, same megatrends can apply. Then of course, it's a different thing to actually build those and get success in that. But now we are talking about prioritizing ideas and coming up with bigger, uh, more potential uh, innovations in this context. Just so that we know how is the best priority for us to start with what type of idea. So <clears throat> this is the, the, the kind of business dynamics uh, business model dynamics between the linear business and platform business is that uh, on the linear business also competes in this one value fixed price point or fixed value and they drive when they get enough volume they can drive down cost of logistics and all of that efficiency of their capital and so forth but the platform business model because it, that it's not responsible of you know the assets Uber is not responsible of the drivers, it's not responsible of the cars. Airbnb is not responsible of the houses. So the cost doesn't really matter. They can offer any price that the, the host or the driver is willing to do. And that, that's up to them. They can choose to do, they can choose not to do. And they can choose also do higher pricing, like in, in case of uh, Airbnb. There are three houses that cost ridiculously amount of money not because of the, the, the uh, quality of that, but the experience of it. So it doesn't mean that all the costs are trying, driven down and all the experiences left are going to be cheap. No, there's always going to be people who want to, different experience. They are willing to pay more, uh, but they're looking to find exactly a better match. And this is exactly what platform economy helps to do because you, don't, you are not limited to designing every phone to look like the same. You're not forced to look every hotel room to look the same, to drive down the cost because that's not an issue anymore. It becomes a different issue of matching the demand and supply in a much more efficient way. So the platform business model can compete in both levels. So they don't, the cost goes down with the volume and the volume goes up at the same time. Uh, because you have more uh, opportunities, you have no variation, more variations, more actors, and the more there is volume, the more appealing it is as a platform through the network effect, and uh, the more it, it grows. And that's why it also is hard to have multiple platforms win in a certain certain specific uh, segment. So on one hand. That's what happens on the business. On the other hand, it also frees from the resource control. So it's not anymore about controlling the resources that we want to be the number one buyer of all the subcontracting capacity that the best uh, subcontractor buyer can deliver us. Uh, it's not about trying to control the value chain. It's not trying to control that side. It's about opening that up and becoming the most uh, um, uh, value creating interactor uh, within the open uh, ecosystem or platform, making everyone's life easier, better, faster, more efficient, smoother, 
and everyone can benefit and do their own business on top of that platform. And, and that's what uh, the platform uh, business is about. And even if platform starts from behind or has higher vari variability, its value can overtake the product leader. So this is mainly that if a platform business doesn't exist yet in a certain industry and it starts with very poor concept, but it's a platform business model, over time with persistence, if the actor or the industry is not changing the platform model, it's very likely that the platform based business model will win over time, just because of the, all the other mega trends. So this alone creates a lot of opportunities there and, and there can be different sizes of platforms and different sizes of ecosystems in different geographics and business verticals or cross business verticals and so forth. So some of the business model uh, examples within the context of platform economy uh, is of course doesn't have to be that you create your own platform. But if you know that there's just a big opportunity on the platform economy itself, now you can consider um, data or data analytics based business models serving the, the needs of the platform economy. You can become a network business enabler, uh, basically an ecosystem orchestrator or ecosystem operator, building just connectivity and better data management and handling services uh, for those uh, that are part of the ecosystem without putting everyone on a platform where, where everyone already is, is uh, more considered as a user or customer, but just enabling more of the linear businesses to act as an ecosystem without having a platform per se. Of course, you can, can become a platform builder, you can create a platform, you can take even existing platform softwares and you can deploy that for different industries. So it's not about coding new software, it's not about necessarily actually even creating anything, but just combining existing assets that you can get freely online, open source softwares, uh, existing APIs with subscription payment models uh, and so forth to, to validate your first MVP of a platform approach for an industry in a certain geographic that doesn't exist at the moment yet. So it's not about, about the components or tools. The innovation is about uh, finding the problem, finding the, the mission that, that team wants to commit to, then taking bits and pieces, information, knowledge, and combining those in a way that makes sense, uh, and then trying to validate that effectively. You can, of course, also be an application developer for end user, so you can create uh, voice-based uh, voice uh, applications utilizing Amazon's um, Alexa services for uh, accessing information about an ecosystem uh, in a way that accesses multiple actors in that and delivers answers or delivers services or products uh, without thinking that, oh, we should create a new e-commerce store. You could create a uh, mixed uh, subscription service and utilizing voice and AI to, to find products and package those in the new consumer subscription service or whatnot and de become an application developer to create a software that does that and then just sell the software for everyone who wants to enable that kind of uh, purchasing experience um, and so forth. You can be an API developer creating interfaces between applications uh, that don't have APIs at the moment. Uh, you can become a My Data operator. So this is a privacy play. So creating more user-centric approach to, to how users' data is, is managed. Uh, and these are just a couple of examples uh, to share that, are, that can be applied. I actually stop here for a while to check if there's any questions at this point. Yeah, Ricardo, you do you have any questions? No, until now, no. 
Okay. So uh, let's look at the, the, this one uh, sub-segment of the platform economy also separately because there's a, there's a big op opportunity within this alone and, and this is also a, a case study for individual um, business models from the previous list. So GDPR, uh, so GDPR is this um, uh, general data pro protection regulation in EU effective 2018 from May and basically it means how the user's data need to be handled differently and how users, individual people have new rights uh, or more clearly stated rights uh, to their data and the service providers have uh, new responsibilities for users' data. And on the other side, the My Data is a concept and a research uh, um, documentation uh, of a concept how to serve uh, individuals better to manage their data uh, that has a publication, freely available, uh, public, freely available publication, but that basically matches exactly also how to do these things. And this this concepts could could be applied to any industry with any with multiple different uh, uh, service models uh, in different countries within Europe that is already like 500 million uh, people market in a digital format and, uh, and as such it's an opportunity to think. Um, so what the key aim of GDPR is really to enable the data portability to people in their own terms. So we all know as individual users have accounts in multiple services, whether that's Facebook, Google, a banking service, whether that's a CRM system in many CRMs that we don't even have access to, we don't know what they have record out of us. We have e-commerce platforms, you know, ticket system, movie systems, we have uh, online stores, we have medical records, we have all kinds of industries that have record and have our user account that has uh, information attached about us as well as interactions that we have done with the service or the organization. So what GDPR wants to enable and that's the key aim and it's not really visible that much for users but it's basically to be able to remove that data out of the services or keep it there but also make it portable and move to another service. So the simple would be to move this from your mobile operator to another mobile operator to make a better deal when they can see your uh, mobile uh, usage, more customized offer instead of just seeing you as a customer that they don't know anything about your user uh, behavior. So that's just a simple model but even more advanced models can be uh, developed on top, but this is the key aim of, of the GDPR. <clears throat> and this uh, my data is a Nordic model uh, uh, concept to really kind of really it's a it's a multi-page publication with great examples and diagrams and everything in architectural pictures even to help understand uh, how this my data uh, could work uh, in practice. It, would, it could look so that, that there's a separated user account existing where us as individual users have a MyData operator uh, serving us and enabling us a user account that we can use to be used in multiple services. Similar to how like Facebook logging works or Google logging works, but in such way that we are actually paying for that service to protect us and our data uh, and that's the only service they do that they don't do anything else with our data they just serve us and our relationships to multiple services where we are then not directly exposed and we have a service provider in between managing our rights uh, and, and data uh, flow what and what, what and how our data can be used uh, and even so that the services themselves could be in a position that they have no data about us. They only access our data per request and once they have served us then no data is left on them. So up to that level. So ecosystem thinking um, basically 
how to look at these ecosystemic uh, strategies. We, we, this is from uh, also a, a concept. So I think majority of people are familiar with business model canvas to come up with uh, business models. So this is kind of looking at much more bigger opportunities in much more um, technical uh, uh, approach, but the similar concept nevertheless on how to think of platform business models. So on the, on the, this is a, a, a case example of, for health and well-being ecosystem. But if we look at uh, uh, this as a, as a canvas, we can be pretty much take at any industry or any kind of geo geographical or other type of like innovation ecosystem we could take startup ecosystem we could take, medical industry we can take, uh, building industry we can take, any, and we can really start to look on, on one hand, what are the customer needs and demands uh, currently, so all the existing known ones, all the top performing ones, the best uh, revenue generating ones uh, that currently exist, what are the core assets uh, that are available, so this means the the technologies, the actors, the services, the product, and, and so forth. And then what are the key drivers, key megatrends, driving within this industry, uh, driving change? So, for example, the data privacy is in every industry, but there can be other like, like uh, uh, being environmentally friendly, fighting uh, uh, climate change, uh, uh, so things that be, change the uh, consumer's behavior, how they would like to act if it's made really easy for them to make a better decision that is better for, for the society at large. So we have end users and consumers to identify them. We have key expert groups that can also be customers. We have companies, tech providers, service providers that on one hand can be uh, assets, but they can also be customers with needs and demands within the industry. We have development companies, research institutes, uh, the middlemen, the actors uh, on the customer needs side. We have public sector actors, those who work with regulation, those who, who also have to be the neutral actors and, and so forth. Then on the other side, on core assets, we have technologies and key enables to map we have data sets, data flows, data storage system map, and we have real and digital world asset combinations. So these are specifically within expanding the platform model to, to um, the offline world. And then how to move from there is to start analyzing each of these, analyze existing and new changing needs, analyze expert, experts' expectation, they, understanding of the market, uh, what kind of uh, more holistic approach could be done, uh, analyzing relevant companies, their business offerings, uh, holistically to recognize more compelling combinations and so forth. Like same for the development companies, again identifying, analyzing uh, different elements uh, and for the public sector. What types of needs each of these customer segments have. And then on the core asset side, to really look at how these bits and pieces could be combined, what are the most valuable assets on the need side that customers want to access, can they access them different ways, and, and, and so forth. Same for the data flows, data sets, data storage, uh, looking at what would be uh, better ways of utilizing, is there new emerging technologies coming that can be utilized, and so forth. And then, of course, is there real-world uh, assets that can be combined with digital assets to offer a totally new experience uh, uh, for customers? For example, uh, assets of parking spots with data about uh, the parking behavior, how many spots are available in the entire city, and then also forecast patterns. What is the likelihood, the busiest time of the of the of the day to find a spot? Uh, what is the easiest time to find a spot? 
and, and these types of digital data assets can enhance uh, the use of uh, physical assets uh, tremendously. So this is the kind of approach to think what kind of platform business could be made by mixing and, and, and identifying bits and pieces uh, out of the, the selected ecosystem. And that would be interesting or likely because of the, the drivers of the change, the megatrends that are influencing the, the behavior. And of course, to this, this goes uh, more if a, if, a, if a big company is worried on their own industry, uh, then they should also look at more holistically, like what kind of combination actually can be looked if we mix customer needs in one industry and assets from another industry for more um, uh, parallel uh, platform innovation. And then when we look at uh, individual, individual uh, uh, platform within the ecosystem, if we want to create like a uh, end user facing, customer facing platform, then basically uh, we can use a canvas like this where now we are looking at the different key actor segments. We have the customers and users as one category. We have the creators and producers on another category. So on the previous canvas, we have, have those uh, assets and we have the needs and customers and then we have us ourselves as platform owner uh, that on one hand focus on orchestrating these actors and that's why we don't have the owner on top we don't have it on the bottom because the owner can also be multiple stakeholders the key is to to be a, a more peer orchestrator a neutral actor but at the same time making decisions that make everyone's life easier. And then we have uh, partners that of course are there also to, to, to make the experience uh, better for, for other actors. And on the outer ring we have the value of proposition. So what value are we delivering to these selected uh, customer segments and producers. So you, you could easily put a case Uber here and figure the canvas out that way. And But you have the value proposition and then you have the value creation. How do we create the value in this platform? And then at the core you have the key enablers. So these are like the data, the APIs, the algorithms, the AIs. So these are the, the tools how we make this machine work. And now on this canvas, we can start putting the value proposition uh, points listed in each of these corners. And also, how do we create that value? And the key here is, of course, that the value is transferred from what value is the customer delivering to, to the producer? What value is the producer delivering to the customer? What value is the partner delivering to the customer? What value is the customer delivering to the partner? And this kind of creates this multi-directional value uh, creation uh, mapping. So from the selected ecosystem, you can select the key, the most uh, appealing, most interesting uh, customers uh, and de defined, uh, or defined all the parties in each of the corners and then going through the value propositions, define and describe value propositions for each party. You can start with just one, one in each, and then see uh, how does that look like. You can put five, prioritize them, how does that look like. And you can uh, then look at how is that value created for them. And the more you can make the value creation so that it's not you, the owner, or it's not the value chain behind you that is generating the value, but it's actually the actors that you are inter inviting to interact on the platform that are generating that value. And remember, the value doesn't have to be physical deliverables. It can be even the like. The Facebook like is a value for the creator as a recognition for what they posted. 
So it's as simple and small as that. To the, then, of course, more expensive uh, items like ordering something in an e-commerce store on Amazon where the product is delivered directly from uh, another company and not Amazon inventory not at all. Key enables, enable, enablers is, is then what are the key necessary technologies, data sets, uh, algorithms, softwares, uh, or even customer service um, or other elements that make this uh, valuable or why do they want to use the platform instead of interacting directly with, with uh, themselves. So here's a model to, to, to look at uh, the key, key uh, enablers. So on one hand, there's uh, tools and services so making it easier to post, making it easier to like, making it easier to share. So those are like in the context of, of social network. In Uber, this is like the rating system, having ratings, uh, having the pricing experience, everything smooth on the Uber, having the invoices, receipts, uh, everything handled in one account, regardless of where you, where you use the Uber in different countries and so forth. Um, then a, a, another uh, operative um, and development is to grow the, the volume of participants. So all of the different parties in different corners in a balanced way so that there's enough producers in the context of, so enough drivers in Uber world in context of in people to be uh, driven and enough demand uh, to attract enough drivers and so forth. Uh, rules and uh, standards, so basically uh, making things understandable and uh, more, more standard instead of having custom interaction with everyone. How is the customer service working? How is the complaint section working? What credit cards can I use? Everything is, is standardized or step by step improving in the order of what can be seen that is the demand from the in, uh, actors in the platform. And then matching how to best match, uh, you know, uh, in, for example, in case Airbnb, how to best match the type of experience and the house or, or, the, the, or the, 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 the experience that they're in. Do, you want, do they want a tree house? Do they want a big house? Do they want more elaborate experience? Do they want it on the beach? Or are they just looking for very cost effective night over in the center of city where they just go to sleep and that just want to you know have peace and quiet easy access short stay uh, and then very well handled uh, key exchange or whatnot and then on the center is the, the core transactions that from each transaction is is to really core is to connect demand and supply so matching and, uh, and then, then uh, making the, the, the uh, value exchange as smooth as possible and then capturing the, the, the monetizing these transactions. And this monetization can be uh, you know, revenue share, commissions on these transactions, or it can be uh, statistical data collection that is not uh, worried to any party, but being able to sell that statistical data uh, outside to third parties as industry knowledge, for example, instead of displaying ads to people. And the, basically the whole interaction uh, of the transaction is something is created and someone is consuming that. It can be physical products, physical services, digital goods, digital services, or it can be data generation, response, uh, anything. So to operate and develop, it's basically growing the volume of participants and activities under that. And the key is so that the exchange of value can start to emerge. Matching is really, the better it matches the supply and demand and the type of supply and the type of demand and the, how that is grown and the better it works, the, the, the the better is the experience and the, the more need there is to the platform and the more commitment there is to use the platform. 
the, the, the more poorly this is done, the, 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 the less, the, 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 the worse the experience is and the, the less the platform has value. Uh, rules and standards. So the platform needs to create the rules that define what is allowed, what is not. Uh, so if there's a lot of bad behavior, so for example, a lot of spam uh, and, and that type of interaction that is distracting what people want from the platform, then the platform will not grow. So entry and usage moderation, who can join and why, and then usage moderation, how to make sure that, that uh, everyone mostly has a good experience there and uh, how to how to weed out uh, the, the type of activity that the, the majority of the target value creation is, is not it's not the expectation of the users so these are the key actors where the platform operator really needs to focus on the tools and the services is like what are the to the tools interaction uh, elements that really make the platform work so in the context of uh, even if Uber doesn't provide uh, own the cars and so forth, but they they create uh, uh, additional components, for example, insurances, or they 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 if you are not happy with your driver, you will get your money back. So which would be very difficult if you would just uh, pay for a random person uh, through another channel. So there's certain elements that uh, always brings these additional values. So these services on one, one hand are what the platform uh, provides itself, but at the same time, it's also uh, what partners can bring to the platform. So they, they can also bring these types of elements that are given to the, the main interactors uh, in the context. Uh, and not the owner directly themselves. So this is how the platform looks different from the value chain interaction, where in the value chain everything happens in a closed pipe and, and these pipes are dependent on the next step of the value chain. Then the platform transactions on the create, creating supply it needs to be balanced between the, the, the so if you only have producers and no customers it's not for, for producers interesting to come or vice versa and sometimes it is more important to start creating supply first before starting to invite uh, uh, no to, to, to create a demand first before inviting supply uh, for the platform And uh, connecting is, of course, key so that uh, the matching of, of the parties, uh, that they can find each other and really connect, con uh, connecting the right type of demand with the right type of supply. And then looking after the whole consumption of the platform of different parties and the interaction, where it then comes down to the compensating different actors in different ways of their activities. And then, of course, uh, modern, modern, monetizing this uh, compensation activities. <clears throat>